boom. You know, like this is some serious cinema magic. What's up everyone, awesome to see you here. Today we'll play around AI animation. We will walk you through the entire process of our animations, what worked, what didn't, even though to be fair, those tools probably improved a lot since then. That said, there are some cool compositional tricks, a little bit of that uh, brutal reality of working with AI, and hopefully that's enough fun to wrap up the whole series on a high note. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so in like 98% of the cases, these shots were generated by AI. Everything you're seeing on the screen is an animation built from a single frame. All we needed was the images we post-produced about three videos ago. If you haven't seen those episodes, definitely check them out. There was almost no traditional 3D rendering, except for one shot, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But regardless, for image to video, we used Kling AI. It's extremely easy to use, I can show you right away. It's honestly childishly simple. We go to Kling AI, upload an image, and pick the latest model. We can also give it a prompt. In this case, we started with a um, static camera, and there's a reason for that. Stick to the end of the video to find out why. We click Generate, and boom, our generation appears. There are other models too. For example, we can use Kling 1.6. What's cool about it is that it gives you motion controls, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, Kling is our go-to, but keep in mind that the image to video is changing fast. And if you wanna try different tools, different solutions, check Project Dream for that. It's a really cool platform where you can test various models, including Kling AI, all in one place. Same as before, you upload your image, enter a prompt and choose the model. We choose Kling as the first one, but now we can also try different ones. You can go here and check how, for example, Cdance handles it. We'll also give uh, Minimax a try. Fast forward, you'll notice that each generation is slightly different. Some are better, some are worse. But the cool thing about Project Dream is that you only pay for generations. You don't need to pay a subscription for Cdance, Kling and Minimax to try them out. So yeah, great way to test and save some credits along the way. That said, we mostly use Kling. And before we show you the final shots from our animation, I want to give you like an extremely quick rundown of how powerful it is. For anyone that's living under the rock for the past six months, here are some tests from various projects that we have done in the past. image to video quality is next level. You know, the resolution is full HD, which is also pretty big, and it's pretty responsive to prompts. It works absolutely amazing, especially when there are no people or moving objects involved. It seems to understand things like reflection and refraction, which is also wild, and it's really cool to see your images come to life just like that. But on the flip side, if there's something that should be in action, like person, animal, or a car, you can expect trouble. You know, you can see some less than perfect examples here, but even when we had some issues, still, the outcome was pretty decent overall. So yeah, you'll see a lot of tests with various success rates in just a moment. Because as with anything AI related, there's always a gray zone. If you expect perfection, you're probably getting disappointed. There are always ways to work around issues, and you'll see a couple of them in this video. So yeah, let me show you how it went with our animation, starting with some free wins. This was around February, and it really hit us that those tools are getting better and better. Some light transitions on the cacti look surprisingly good as well, it was absolutely crazy. Same goes for Panikida shots. The environmental b-rolls were basically free wins. Whether it was the chapel, the setting sun, or just some trees against the sky, everything looked surprisingly well right out of the gate. An even bigger surprise was that some of the character-driven shots they worked really well too. You can see a selection of these different shots here. Honestly, that's super impressive. Even close up, the expression on the face or just the priest walking, the results are insane. And granted, it wasn't a complex action, no tricky movement, but still yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Either way, things can go terribly wrong. And I'm talking full-blown nightmare situation. I'll just let the shots play. <laughs> Sometimes it's just downright crazy. This is like a pure AI hallucination town. 
welcome, uh, tickets are free, <laughs> let me be your guide, whatever. We had countless generations like that, and it's both hilarious and tragic at the same time. You cannot help but laugh, but you're also burning credits, so yeah, I'm not sure who's laughing at the end. But anyway, those are two extremes, and like with anything AI, there's always everything in between. And you cannot begin to imagine how crazy can it get. For example, the priest kept going in the wrong direction. They got extremely confused, or worse, just standing still. Like, we had no idea what's going on. We had issues with the woman acting too hard, like too much facial expression, twitching eyes and all that. You may think that this is nothing, but when you put it in the edit, it's just so weird. Another issue we had was the candles, looking like they were set on fire. Not just burning, but like actual fire, you know? And at first, we thought that this is not a problem, but again, it totally breaks the illusion. And stuff like this is impossible to predict. Maybe it's already been fixed by the time you're watching this, but at least you had some little walk down the memory lane of AI tools in early 2025. So in short, there are wins, fails, and everything in between. Classic AI, right? Now, with all that in mind, we need to find ways to make it work. And luckily, there are a few tricks that can make your life a little bit easier when things go wrong. So yeah, the first idea is a pretty weird one. It's the weirdest piece of advice, but that's how it is. Just keep generating, like keep rolling the dice. You know, you need to factor into the budget that some of those generation will fail. And that's the reality of it. Always use the newest models available. They are usually give you the best quality. But if you're aiming for a specific camera movement and it's not working out, try checking the older models as well. Some of them offer extra motion controls that newer don't. So yeah, that can make a big difference. And I think you're not sacrificing much, maybe like five or 10% quality. So it's definitely worth testing. But yeah, keep generating. Sometimes it takes five times, sometimes it takes even 10. And as soon as you have something, put it into the edit. Don't even think about working without one. It might not look perfect at first, but all you need is often a three, four second snippet. And keep in mind that the first two, three seconds of a clip are often useless, so watch each of them till the end. And remember, you can always use Topaz video to slow things down. Even a 10 second clip can be stretched to 30 seconds, which also helps to hide minor hallucinations along the way. And while it's not perfect for fast action, it works really well for animations, especially architectural ones. And by the way, we try to use AI to slow down uh, using prompts. Uh, sometimes the action comes way too fast, so we added prompts like extreme slow motion or similar. Sometimes it helped, sometimes it didn't, you know, like no real solutions. We are just reporting here. It seems like a good practice is also avoiding negative prompts. For example, instead of no movement, we go with static camera. A lot of people are doing it this way. For us, the results were mixed, but it's definitely worth testing. Moving on, sometimes the generations are solid, but the camera movement isn't ideal, you know? And you might think that I need to generate more, but actually that's not the case. Let me show you something in Premiere. Here's a sequence from the Cacti project. I have three shots straight from Kling, with all the effects, all the Premiere stuff removed. Kling animated them really well, and the motion feels smooth and natural, but there's one major issue. The camera is moving in opposite direction between the shots. That creates a ping pong effect in the edit, which is not what we usually want. It forces viewers to go from left to right over and over again. There's also a smaller issue. In this shot, the camera rotates, and in the last one, it moves downward. It would have been a little bit better if the downward movement started earlier, so the motion goes natural through all the three shots. Now, let me show you how it looked like in the final sequence. You'll notice the camera flows much better between the shots. It feels like one continuous movement. There's also a subtle but important detail. The focus stays in one place between the shots, so the viewers can rest on the same area on the frame. And the trick here isn't groundbreaking, but if you're new to editing, it might actually feel pretty eye-opening. But yeah, we can simply flip shots. That's actually allowed, trust me. It's not the cleanest solution, but honestly, it saved us more than a few times, at the very least, something to think about. Secondly, we can animate position and scale exactly as we want. If the camera needs to move down a bit, just keyframe the position. 
you can see this shot moving down and yeah it's a simple solution but it works really well even if you look at the next shot the camera movement continues seamlessly but if i were to reset you can notice that the original shot had no movement at all editing tricks guys All right, a couple of tricks down, a few more to go. Next up, I want to show you that instead of using the full image, you can use crops. You know, let me show you what I mean. In the previous video, we had a nest sequence and now I can reveal what's hidden inside. As you can see, this shot looks pretty cool. There's a lot of movement, but let me turn everything off. So yeah, the base version wasn't as perfect as we have hoped for especially the candles, which started to hallucinate and some artifacts around the throne popped up. Stuff like this happens all the time, as we said before, especially when there's lots of detail in small areas. But if we hide the base layer this time, you'll see all the individual crops. All of them are different generations, which we must on top of each base. So what happened here, we ran each crop individually. Instead of full HD for the whole image, Kling has full HD for crop. Essentially, we are trying to give it more resolution and more details to work with, so it doesn't hallucinate as much. And once everything's generated, we can stitch the parts, downscale, reposition, and yeah, that's the trick. Same with this one. We put it together in After Effects though. Here's the base layer, everyone standing still. And the monster is not moving at all. Let's breeze through the layers. One shot adds some vapor. Another one is just priest falling. And layer by layer, we build up the moment. We added the monster as well. Yeah, we really wanted to animate its head because it was a nice continuous thing in the edit. So yeah, you can kit bash multiple AI shots together and it's a very handy rabbit out of the hat to pull. Uh, moving on, last two tricks and here's another one. Hallucinations in a shot don't mean you have to throw it out of the window. Just like we fix things with Firefly, we can also patch them up in After Effects. Here's the final version. Everything looks clean. But the original one, yeah, not so much. There were some weird candle-like shapes hallucinating behind the priest. So yeah, what did we do? We tracked this shot, linked a few patch layers to the tracking controller. Eventually the priest layer to cover the mess. And voila, they move along with the same Put it. Truly world class VFX here. Okay, so for the final trick, one of the shots in our animation just didn't work with AI, no matter how hard we tried, so we went full 3D on it. And let me show you how it looked inside 3ds Max. Boom. You know, like this is some serious cinema magic. It's literally just two planes reflecting in the water. That's it. But there's a little bit of a twist. We took this frame and we painted a green background behind them, just to have a still frame. Then we ran it through clean and boom, it made him walk on a green screen. So that gave us a little animation clip on a green screen. Then we could bring it to After Effects. We could key out the green screen behind him and make an opacity map for this guy. And just like that, we had a full 3D shot powered by AI. All right, beautiful. That's a wrap on the 3D plus AI sandbox series. I hope that you enjoyed the ride. I hope you have a different way of working right now. Not always linear, not always clean and full of unexpected wins and creative shortcuts. And yeah, as a little bonus, I want to show you some additional fails. Thanks for watching and see you in the future series.